No, she's recording Aki, that's why, bro. Yeah, he knows. So, I have she two recording. questions to ask. Um, the first one is, if the Quran and authentic hadith, let me know when you're back. I did, I did. Wallahi, I did. Wallahi, wallahi, I did. Wallahi, wallahi. I'm not asking for myself. Uh, it's not about that. Sorry, one second. No Shabhan. problem, it's fine. Huh? Yes, what? Yes, yes. I'm camera shy. You're camera shy. I'm la, 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 la. <laughs> you I should be. I should be. I should be camera shy. I'm very. I. I don't want to be a YouTube star. That's for sure. You're gonna be. I'm not as brave as you are, right? Yes, sister. Yes. Yes, I'm listening. Okay, so the first question is. If the Quran and authentic hadith are the true word of God, how comes is the Holy Bible, which yes has different translations in different languages, sister, and come, has sister, come close. different versions, but how comes is the Holy Bible the most sold out book in history? Why is it not the Quran and hadith if they're meant to be the true word of God? In your opinion, uh, okay. don't deviate. And I say this because some Muslim answer by deviating the question. It's okay. a simple question. I hope you understand. Yeah, that's fine. First, first, firstly, I appreciate that you approached me in a nice way. Thank we you. had a nice discussion. Not last time, we don't need to shout or scream. You know, brothers, well, I'm so fed up with these, man. Like, where am I going to put this? Well, like, brothers, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, sister, can you come a little bit closer? Yes. Okay. So, what I'm saying is this. Firstly, if you come and speak in a nice way, you ask a question, I'll answer. We don't need to scream. We don't need to shout. We don't need to insult. You ask the valid question, and I'll give you my reply, direct reply. Yeah? Thank you. Okay. So, the question is if the hadith, the Quran, and the hadith are from God, why is the Bible the most sold book in history? In history. Ever. Ever. Okay. Did, uh, so, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, you the question is question. I understand that. I would say personally, yes. I don't know if that is the truth, but let's say, argument sake, the Bible you is can it sold. Afterwards okay, no problem. Sake, no yeah. problem. Let's go with it that the Bible is sold or given out or whatever more than the Quran. No problem. Harry Potter might be sold more than everybody. It's not, I by the way. Argue, so not, argue, not argument sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Sorry. okay. Let's suppose it's not. The Bible selling more than the Quran doesn't prove it's truthful. What's in the Bible and what's in the Quran is our determined factor of what is true or wrong. If we choose, for example, let's say the Hindu book outsells the Bible. Does that mean now the Hindus are right? Would you follow them? I wouldn't follow them. I know you wouldn't follow them. I wouldn't say the Hindu scriptures, the Vedas, are now from God because they sell the most. No, it might be that the Hindu, they have a big population, nearly maybe one and a half billion, maybe more than that. So all I'm saying is I think our truth should not lie on how many books have been sold. That's what I would say personally. No, thank you. And you know what? I'm only looking for personal opinion. Okay, my opinion that's my personal on this opinion. Is if Allah was the true God, which, you know, I don't think he you is, okay. but I respect that you think he is. Yes. Then why would Allah allow that? Surely if he's the almighty, if he's the God, he would want to ensure that his book would be the most sold, you know, whether you give it, you buy it and give it for free or whatever. So that gives me doubts, you know, the, the, so the next question. Can I answer that question? You can answer, sorry. Okay, so, so, okay, so you, you said an important point. So you said, for example, why is it that God is not, if Allah is true, then why is he not enabling more people to read the Quran or buy the Quran? Okay, it's a very, it's a valid question. Thank you. Now we also accept in Islam of free will, meaning God can never force people. Allah says if he wanted, he could have made everyone a Muslim. But the thing is this, then what is the point of the test? The question here is this and the reply to it is that God Almighty has given us a free will. If every single person on this planet was not a Muslim, it doesn't take away from the kingdom of God. It doesn't add into it. You are only doing yourself a favor if you follow the true commandment of God. So therefore, the people buying the Quran, people praying, not praying, it's irrelevant to God. God says, here's the truth. Follow it. You don't want to follow it. There's consequences in the hereafter. You can do, that's why, we believe, sorry, not to long it out. We have, God Almighty has two wills. The Sharia will, which God Almighty wants for his servants, and the general will. The general will encompasses people who go and commit murder, people who have sex outside of marriage, people who drink alcohol, people who murder babies. These are the will that Allah has 
enabled and allowed for an individual to do that, but there will be consequences in the hereafter. So you have free will, you choose to buy it, you don't choose to buy it. Yeah, and uh, we also believe in free will. Yes. Um, so the statistics show, yeah. you know, uh, that's the, coming on to the second and final question yes. is, um, Christianity is the most dominant religion in the world, right? It has 2.4, roughly 2.4 billion followers. Islam has 1.9. Now, you can Google this information after. So my question is, if Islam is the truth, you know, how comes Christianity dominates now? I hear what you say about free will, but it doesn't change the facts. The Holy Bible and Christianity dominate Islam, the Quran and Hadith don't. Okay, so, so just, to, okay, just to reply to that question. So, number one, if you look at denominations, Catholics, because when you're looking at Christianity, you're putting all those groups of sex into one branch. It doesn't work like that. Sunni Islam has overtaken Catholicism. From what I know, Catholics are the largest group under Christianity. But let's say argument's sake, no problem. But There's more Christ. Christians, no problem. There is more Christians than Muslims. Once again, when I stand in front of God, God is going to say to me, Ali, did you worship me or Muhammad? Or Allah worshipped you? Did you worship me or Jesus? I worshipped you. The Allah is not going to say, Ali, which group did you belong to? Muslim. Ah, oh, but Christianity was more. Oh. The truth is not measured by a group. We believe you can be on the truth by yourself against the entire world. I'm looking here for the truth. If sister, your measurement of success is based on numbers and how many books are sold, then what that means is if Hinduism grows and the Hindu books are sold more than the Bible and Hinduism outpaces Christianity, does that mean now you're going to become a Hindu? No, but my, the, my question that's is... That's the point here. Right, and this is... Um, I don't know, so I'm actually generally asking, right? Yes. So, does, it, does the Quran or Hadith or whatever, do they teach that Islam will take over the world? No, it doesn't. What, what it does, says what do is... What do they teach? Or, or the no, no. religion, you know, what does it teach about okay, the so, technology? So, or? for example, what we believe is very simple, okay? What we look at, for example, is those who, for example, follow the commandments, okay? We believe we follow the commandments that were sent to us, which is the worship of one God and one God alone. So the point I'm trying to say in a nutshell is this. Islam doesn't say yes, that if every Muslim worship Allah and obey these commandments, have no doubt, Muslim Islam is already prevailing. You talk about Christianity. There has never been a time in the history of Islam millions of people have turned their back to Islam never in the West in the West in Europe in the Western world do you know how many Christians have become atheists millions I'm talking but I'm talking I'm not talking 5 million 10 million 300 110 200 million go look at America look at Europe look at the UK how many people have left Christianity why I speak to them and today we just had somebody who accepted Islam Claire from Glasgow the Trinity does not make sense. And that's why people are leaving. Show me a time in history, sister, that millions of Muslims left Islam the way millions of Christians left Christianity. Well, the problem with this question is, um, I mean, and actually, can you clarify this for me, please? Sure. Um, according to Islam, right, what happens yes. to apostates? There's a capital punishment, and we are proud of capital that. Let, let, me, let me repeat again. So, so can I finish the yes, question? Yes, sure, sure. Uh, thank you for being That's okay. respectful. I appreciate the respectful conversation. So, you're saying in Islam there is a capital punishment yes. for apostasy. Yes. So, why would anyone, right, not anyone, because I would anyway, because I don't believe in it, but yeah. you can see why people would be afraid to publicly live in Islam, especially if they are in places where Sharia law dominates. I don't know, explain it better to me, because okay, it's sure. quite frightening, isn't it? To be honest, <laughs> to, be on to be honest, it's very, it's very clear. The issue of capital punishment, like I said before, I don't sugarcoat my religion. In Islam, there is a capital punishment for Riddah. We, look, Islam doesn't work. We don't, we don't work in this way, sister. We don't come and say, Islam is a religion of flowers. And every Monday when you wake up, there's flowers. 
Islam is a realistic religion. Islam deals with the real problem of humankind. And now, when it comes to the issue of apostasy, you're a Christian. Your book, the God of Jesus, the God of the Old Testament is Jesus. Jesus has directly said, anybody that worships any other God, apart from the God of Israel, should be killed. Are you looking at the Old Testament? Old Testament. What about the New Covenant? No problem. Sister, who's the God of the Old Testament? What's his name? Um, Yahweh, but... Jesus? But, but, can I ask you? Is it Jesus? You know, you know, you know, I'm here to ask you questions. Yes, yes, but I'm... I'm and I am, I'm, I've, 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 I've but accepted my, it. My, my question is, so in Christianity, we have a new covenant in Jesus Christ. So in Christianity, there is no uh, such a thing as apostasy. And the fact that you have that in Islam shows that there is... Uh, there is free will, but it comes at a cost. Would you agree with that? That I will disagree with okay. because do you accept that the Old Testament, Jesus was the God of the Old Testament? Um, Jesus, so if you if you ask me that, then why don't you accept him as God? No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, because I don't believe in him as God, you do, I don't. So that's what I'm you asking don't believe, you. But do you believe in the Old Testament? No, the Old Testament of the uh, Torah, yes, but not the one you have today. So it's because so you believe Jesus, him. Jesus, uh, okay, we're talking about the Trinity. Okay, so, yes. You know, so yes. do you believe Jesus to be God? Jesus is God okay, as you, part of the Trinity. That's fine. So it's three persons in one essence. Now, that's fine, I know just, it's difficult to understand, no, but no, it no, doesn't no, make it no, not no, true. No, not the Trinity. Do you, believe, do you believe the God of the Old Testament was Jesus? Yes, he was. Okay. As so the do you, son, as okay, the son, as that's, the son part of the Trinity. That's fine. Do you accept that if Jesus is the God of the Old Testament, at one moment, Jesus revealed the Old Testament and in the Old Testament it said anyone that worships any other God besides the God of Israel, which is Jesus to your belief, I respect that, should be, should be put to death. Now I'm asking a question. Did Jesus at one point apply capital punishment in the Old Testament? Um, this question is invalid because we are under a new covenant. So this is the whole point. This is the no, whole I, I, point. I know. Okay. But, but so before did he? There. Did he? But we. You no, but did he before? No, you can't look at Christianity by looking at the. Uh, no, that's old fine. Covenant. No, no, I'm saying. But, but at one point, did so, Jesus stipulate that? At one point, before the new covenant. It was the old covenant for the people of Israel, yes. right? But we are under a new covenant. I, I respect under that. Jesus Christ. So you can't ask me something that doesn't apply to me. I, I, I understand. So if I left Christianity today. Yes. Um, the, you know, I, I will not be put to death. Okay, so, so the question However, I, so, the so, question I'm asking, sister, is did Jesus in the Old Testament at you, one moment of time... Your question. Okay, okay. Did he at one point say, kill apostates? I already answered your questions. Yes or no, sister? Let's just say yes or no. I already answered your questions. Yes. Okay, so, 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 just, so just to make it... I, I so just to make it... Guys, 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 don't get involved. Don't get involved, please. We're listening to it, please. Yeah, let's be respectful. Let's make it very clear. The reason I'm mentioning this, guys, is because the capital punishment is not something exclusive to Islam. Every you, single... You, sorry, go on, go ahead. Every single country, and I promise you, I promise you, mark my words, the capital punishment is there to protect the masses at large. Let me give you an example. If we live in a Christian country, if I go to Russia, Russia is predominantly Christian. They follow Christianity. I promise you, if I go to the center of Moscow and I say F Christianity, I promise you I will not make it out alive. You know why? Because they have genuine love for their faith. I actually, I actually saw a video of three young Russians. They went to a church and they hit some statues. They mocked it. I swear to God, Christians, Orthodox Christian youngsters came. Well, like they beat them so badly. Yeah. The point I'm trying to say is this. I'm not asking for anyone to do violence. The point is this. Islam says very simply and categorically clear anybody that causes fitna, this, uh, fitna in the land, there is capital punishment. Now, is this only for non-Muslims and apostates? No, because in, in the Quran, chapter 49 verse 9 or 49 verse 12 says what? If two Muslims are fighting, you go to the other one and say, look, stop the war. They say, no, we're allowed to kill that Muslim. So one second, one second, I thought it was only for apostates. No, Islam is what? There, anybody that causes fitna, anybody that causes corruption and want to corrupt the community at large, Islam says there is a capital punishment. We are proud of that. How does that make Islam false? That's why I want to know. How does capital punishment of Islam, sister, make Islam false? Um, it, it, I, I believe Islam exists. I just don't believe 
right? We worship the same God. That's because okay. my my God, Jesus Christ says to pray for your enemies, to do good to those who hurt you. Really? And yeah, we really? have free will. And yes, the first commandment is to love your God and to not have any other gods. But the punishment will come at death because when death comes, judgment is set. What punishment? Um, the punishment of eternal uh, damnation in lake fire. Oh, hold on a second. So, well, but uh, in this life, there is no um, capital punishment for leaving Christianity. Right. I, 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 anyway, I, 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 thank you, sis. I would rather be killed here than go into hellfire forever for the rest of my life. I mean, if you think about it, guys, what's the sister seeing is Jesus' love. Okay, he loves his enemies, turned the other cheek, you know, and there's other verses I can show, like New chapter 19, verse 27. Those of my enemies that didn't allow me to reign over them is a parable, but the parable is explaining the end of times. Bring them here and kill them. Now, let's see, we go with what the sister says. Jesus is about love, mercy, mwah, perfect. What she just said is on the day of judgment, Jesus will take me and say, Ali, you Muslim Satan, hellfire. Woo! I'm going to say, well, where's the love? What happened to love? So we know that there is not love. That's not real love. No, there is. Uh, no, it's, I'm going to burn in hellfire. Huh? How, what kind of love is that? You don't have to. You don't have but to. But if I genuinely believe Christianity is f your Jesus is going to, the loving Jesus is going to throw me into hellfire. You're going to watch right. me burn. Right, so is that love? God, God doesn't want anyone to perish. Thank this you. Is why he sent His Son, Jesus Thank Christ, um, to the world, so that anybody who believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This is what God provides to us. So I don't want you to perish. This is why Thank I, you. I told you I don't want to be on YouTube, but I Must, do it same. because I don't want you to Sister, perish. I don't want same with you. Yes, to yes, perish yes. Of watching online, this is why I'm here to offer the message of salvation. You know what, sister? You know one thing I admire about you is that you actually come here and you talk about the gospel. Thank you. You know why? Because at least as a Christian, she didn't come here and insult me and insult my religion. She came here and shared the gospel. We all heard it, right? We choose to accept it or reject it. But at yeah. least she's sharing the gospel. I think she's the only one that I see in the park that's actually talking about the gospel. And I admire you for that, that you're not busy here insulting Islam, rather you're talking about your religion, which is your right. Now, why I want to say is the following. Islam, which you talked about your gospel, Islam also calls you to salvation. And Islam says the following. No blood sacrifice is required. Our God doesn't say, I have to pick an innocent man and that man is going to die for anyone's sins. You look at the mercy of Islam. Guys, you make the decision. The sister talked about the gospel. She had her saying, we respect that. But look at what Islam is saying. Allah says in the Quran, no, in the Hadith, Hadith Qudsi, the Prophet said, if mankind was to come to me with sins as big as the mountains, I will forgive every single one of them except associating partners with me. Put this into perspective. Except, uh, Shirk, the, associating partners. Uh, okay. And if you die upon it, look at the mercy. Islam says no one needs to die. No blood sacrifice. If you sin, come and ask for repentance. Guess what? When you repent, God turns those bad deeds into good deeds. Please tell me, a single religion on this earth that says such a merciful God that all he wants from you is what? Acknowledge me? You've made a mistake? I'm sorry, I'm going to try again. You done it again? I'm sorry, I'm going to try again. You done it a million times? You say, I'm sorry, I'm going to try again. No death, no death, no blood sacrifice. Now you tell me, blood sacrifice, no blood sacrifice. Which one is more merciful? Can I answer that sure, before please. I go? Sure. Um, you know, thank you. Um, it's been great to have yes, this you discussion. Yes, you too. Thank you. Um, so the Bible, so there is no need for blood sacrifice because Jesus was the sacrifice. And the Bible says, um, you know, if how to get saved is simple. Um, if you confess with your mouth Sorry. that Jesus Christ is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the dead, you will be saved. That's found in Romans. If you Google this word, you will find that this is um, how you get saved in Christianity. Um, but we have, we would have so much more, but we can agree to disagree. Yes. And thank you for your time. And I thank you. What's I your name? Okay, I'm, sorry. I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 what can I call you? What can I call you? Christian lady. Sister? That's how you call me. I call you Christian you sister. Too. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. So I, I, once again, I thank you for coming, having a nice civilized discussion. I genuinely enjoyed it. And I would like to look forward to having more sincere discussions okay. because you came with, you know, an old tree. And also we respect that. Thank you very much for your time. And once again, guys, you've heard the sister, the Christian sister who's preached the gospel. Sorry. And as Muslims, 
you know what we say, La ilaha illallah. We worship one God, the God of Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we ask Allah to guide us all and our sister. And wants the same for us, of course. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Take care. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.